uh, I was a part of the first group to, to integrate the schools in 1965. I was a senior at that time. Going had been basically in the in the, in the um, desegregated school for my freshman, sophomore, junior year, and the senior year now proceeding uh, to the all-white school. Uh, the first day, the first day truly was a day of hell. I truly do not believe that I, nor any of us, and, and, and to be very candid with you, it was approximately eight of us that embarked upon this. There were, the, the, the schools were integrated, the freshmen class and the senior class was the group that, that somehow or another was chosen to be the two grades that were being integrated. So the ninth and the twelfth grade were the grades that were being integrated. Uh, we met that uh, day prior to uh, the day of the of school starting and Mrs. McFerrin and various other members of the uh, black community of uh, the Civic Welfare League activity had got us together and tried to give us a feel for what to expect because they had already been told that the attempt would be to run us away really for us not to be able to succeed that first day because that, that first day was a very crucial day. The, the white community of the school perceived that if they were able for us to run us away that day that this would be a failure and that we were determined that we were not going to be turned away. The day started out by getting on the bus and basically being told by the bus driver for me that no niggas are going to ride my bus. And this kind of set the tone. This set the tone for all of the other people that were on the bus. The bottom line behind that is that the when I got on the bus, the bus was approximately half full. Now let me explain to you what I mean by half full. Half full was that every seat on the bus had a white student on it. Okay, so that meant that if I was going to sit down on the bus, I had to sit with a white student. As part of the strategy that had been laid out uh, by, by Ms. McFerrin and the other leaders, they did not want us to go to the back of the bus because the back of the bus represented a lot of things, but not only that, but the, we went to the back of the bus, that became an issue of safety as well, because the bus driver can't drive the bus and look in the mirror and see what's going on back in the back of the bus. Now, we later found out, tactically, the back of the bus was a very good place to be, and I'll tell you why. So, when I got on the bus, uh, the bus driver, uh, when, I, when I say I got on the bus, I got on the bus along with myself, John Franklin, uh, his sister. Uh, it was three of us got on the bus at the same time. So we all attempted to sit in the seats with other white students. So as we would attempt to sit down, they would slide over so you couldn't sit. Okay. This, this drill seemed like it went on for approximately 35 or 40 minutes, but I know in reality it really didn't go on that long. The bus driver then made a conscious decision that he was going to have us sit right behind him. Okay? And I mean the second row. Uh, the bus driver is here, and then we sit directly behind the bus driver. So that meant that some of the other students uh, the other that were sitting ended up having to sit together. So this became kind of our assigned seating on the bus for the lack of a better word but as the bus as we got more and more black students on the bus uh, they began to set in different locations so ultimately it became a situation where the whole front part of 
the bus that I was on, I shouldn't say the front part because there was only like five of us on there, became, were all up front. Well, that day was an extreme long day. When you got on the bus, they they were really they they really was expecting us to get to 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 the attempt was really to run us away that first day. Uh, there was things thrown at us. We were spit on. There was um, and it's hard to hard to describe this, but the most of the students on the bus were poor too. But believe it or not, they threw money at us, pennies. I never saw anything in the higher than a dime, but they threw pennies, nickels, and when they got tired of throwing pennies, in the fall of the year, when the corn came in, they had pockets full of corn. Now, what I mean by corn is that, uh, you know, corn that would be fed to the pigs, they would shuck the corn and, 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 and shell it and put it in the pockets. So instead of throwing pennies, I guess they ran out of pennies, they would throw corn. So, and the interesting thing about this, in many cases, the bus driver got beat up as much as we did because we got to a point that, you know, we could anticipate what was coming and we would move one way or the other and he would end up. And this went on every day. This went on every day. Uh, that's one of the reasons I say strategically, the back of the bus probably would have been a better place to be, but realistically it, it wouldn't have been the right place to be because one thing would have led to another one and then there would have been probably more abuses and various other things to take place. That's just, that's how the day went. Getting that, now bear in mind, this took place roughly a hour's ride from the time you got on the bus until you got to the school. Once you arrived at the school, then there was a whole new set of things that started to happen. And this went on day after day after day after day. Uh, I do not believe there was a single day that I went to school, that I was not, and that, that corn or pennies or dimes or whatever, paper, uh, the, 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 uh, the spitball paper were not, uh, were not thrown or I was not hit or somebody was not hit. And this, this was, and, and this went on in the classroom. This went on in the classroom of, uh, of the teachers as well. Not only in the classroom, but it went on in the, uh, a couple of us took a uh, wood shop. This went on in the wood shop classrooms as well. So it was, and at lunch. Now lunch really was a was a was a was a feast for them because we all met. Lunchtime kind of was the kind of check to see, make sure everybody was okay. Jane Braswell, and I have to say this, Jane Braswell kind of was the godfather in many respects because James took it up on himself every day to ensure that if, that everyone was there and how everyone was doing because we would pass each other off times in the hallway doing changes of classes but but that wasn't a fun thing either that really wasn't a fun thing either because that's that's when you would get walked into bumped into punched Hit, kicked, spit upon, changing classes. But at during the lunchtime, we would all get together, and that's when we could kind of get a feel for what had gone on that day or that morning, how that person was doing, if that person needed any additional help with anything that was going on. Because bear in mind, we were not only while all this abuse was going on, we were still being expected to do our fair share in terms of homework in the classrooms and to be, you know, be ready to step up and, and do what had to be done the next day in class.